Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran that the hour, which is the day of judgment, shall surely come and it's coming very, very soon. For indeed its signs have already come. Yet many people heed not to the matters of the hereafter and they turn away from the matters of the hereafter. If you think about this life, which is perishing very soon, this life is a passageway to the hereafter. It's not a place for everlasting life. Very soon, this life will end and every living thing on earth shall die. Even the mountains that stand in majesty will, will turn into insignificant particles of dust. These mountains will be blown away. The whole earth will be destroyed. People will be resurrected and they will be judged. Some will go to paradise and others will go to hellfire. As for the Muslims, if their hasanat, the good deeds, were to be more than the bad deeds, then they will go to paradise without prior torture. But if the bad deeds were to be heavier than the good deeds in the scale, then those people will be under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They might be forgiven and they might be tortured in hellfire. Just think about this fact. If you were to be given every single type of the worldly pleasures in this dunya, in this world, and you were to be dipped in hellfire, that will make you forget all the pleasures in this life. Just one dip in hellfire. This life is not forever. This lifespan is very short for this nation. The average is between 60 and 70. And that's nothing compared to the lifespans of the previous nations who would live for more than a thousand years. And if you were to compare this lifespan to the hereafter, that does not end, it will be nothing. This life is like one hour. So you should know how to live this hour properly in acts of obedience away from the sins, away from the haram. Because if you commit the haram and you feel with enjoyment, that enjoyment will go away. After one moment you forget it. The following day you'll forget it. But what will remain is that burden, the burden of the sin, that if you don't repent from, you come on the day of judgment with the sins on your shoulders like mountains. And they might be the reason for you to be admitted into hellfire that is fueled by people and stones. Who can tolerate one dip in hellfire? Who can tolerate the insects that will attack you in your grave? They will bite you and you will be with your body and soul. You feel the pain. Umar radiallahu anhu asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was talking about the two angels that ask the dead in the grave. Umar radiallahu anhu said, would our minds be returned to us? Meaning, would you be able to recognize 
and realize what's going on. The Prophet said, yes, as you are now. Umar couldn't talk. Umar was unable to say a word. Thinking about this overwhelming event when you are in your grave. And you can feel you are by yourself. How many young people these days miss out some prayers because they are playing, because they are driving, because they are watching games or movies. And there are many people in the graves who wish to come back to this world and make one prostration for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where are you going? Think about what is waiting for you in the grave. Think about what is waiting for you in the hereafter. Think about the moment when your deeds will be weighed. Are you gonna make it? Would your good deeds be more than your bad deeds? Think about that moment that you are not sure. Think about the moment you'll be ordered to cross the bridge that is extended over hellfire. You don't know whether you're going to make it to paradise or you're going to fall off into hellfire. Think about these moments. Think about the torture of the grave, the torture of hellfire. Imagine all these things that will help you come to the religious sessions to learn and practice your religion so you leave this world while you are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, judge yourself now before you are going to be judged in the hereafter. It's way easier for you to, to judge yourself in this life than being judged in the hereafter. Weigh your deeds before your deeds will be weighed in the hereafter. Reflect upon what you are doing. See if you are doing well or you are falling short in many of the obligations or if you are falling into many of the sins. Just imagine all that. Come back to religion with full intention, strong intention. If yourself whispers to you and the devil whispers to you to steer you away from religion, say, oh myself, I don't want to go to hellfire. I want to go to paradise. I don't want to be tortured in the grave. I don't want to be tortured in hellfire. Don't take me there. I don't want to be there. I want to be in paradise. I want to be a winner in the hereafter. Think about this. That will help you practice your religion and stay away from the haram. And if you are regular in attending the religious sessions, that will definitely help you and keep you around these blessed sessions and that will help you practice your religion in a better way insha'Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala I ask Allah for me and you to keep us steadfast on the right path insha'Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala we ask Allah azza wa jal to help us be pious and help us Die as righteous Muslims, insha'Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala.